the race has begun. These AI factions are now fighting to claim their short victory objectives. That's what I like about short victory. It makes it much tighter at the end. Long victory objectives, we know who's going to win after episode 3 or episode 4. It's just another 4 episodes for watching the inevitable. But with short victory objectives, we're actually going to be able to see much more of a race going on. Right now, Rome, Egypt and the Seleucid Empire are all in a powerful spot, but any one of them could win it. Long campaign, Rome has this easily because they've got Marvin reforms and everything else. They always win. But short victory objectives, anything could happen. Is this always in Rome Total War? What is that? I've got no idea. This is using Greek mod, it makes it more accurate. Uh, the Greek city-states, for example, um, have settlements now way over here. Uh, Rome is united. Um, a few border design changes here and Parthia um, has a couple of settlements down here as well. Uh, but they don't start in the Middle East. Uh, this mod was made by Avazef and should be downloadable uh, down below. <laughs> These stupid Greek souls stuck over here. Um, this here is just uh, this is just for me. This won't be in your campaign. It's just to help with uh, it's just to help with the AI only stuff, make it a little quicker. So yeah, if you want to play this mod, it should be down below in with a link and a small tutorial to how to install it. And in episode one, we of course uh, saw some very interesting stuff, mostly the rise of Rome, Seleucid Empire, and Egypt. Well, I guess the beginning. The rise of Seleucid Empire, but the beginning of Rome and Egypt. And we almost saw the beginning of a Carthaginian Empire. They took Capua in episode 1. Uh, that was very interesting, but sadly they lost it a few turns later to the Romans. That could have been a very interesting campaign. They take Capua, take these two settlements as well. The Gauls an attack. Imagine if Rome got destroyed. Oh, that'd, be, that'd be super interesting. We might have then seen a a Gallic victory or a Carthaginian victory, which we've never seen before in any AI campaign. Ah, oh, the British are going for the goals now. That's not good. Because that just helps the Romans. If the goals get destroyed, that's just a positive for the Romans because they need to destroy that faction and take, I think, 15 settlements. The Germans trying to attack the Amazonia settlement. They're not going to win because the Amazons win almost every time in auto resolve. They're going to need a lot more troops up there if they want to take that. It's looking very quiet right now on the Egypt Seleucid front here. No one's crossing any borders yet. There was some a, a few slaughters going on, but they've, they've calmed down a little bit now. They know, they, they know what's at stake with this war. Ooh, well done to Frey. So finally crossed over. Third time lucky, I guess, and they've taken Nicomedia from the Greek city-states. But Mediolanium has also fallen. Rome now has a, has, a, has a very good stronghold down here, and they're gonna start expanding like crazy, I assume. If the Gauls lose the Legia, then that's their last good settlement. They're gonna be gone if they lose that. And the British will be in a very good position if they can take it now. The British got pushed back. That's quite a good settlement for Britain. Well, for any faction there, because of uh, the population and the buildings in there. Seize fire between Rome and Carthage. So yeah, we're not going to see a Carthaginian Italy, I don't think. I think, yeah, I think Rome's fine there now. Uh, but uh, Lilibeum here, a Carthaginian settlement fallen to the Greeks. And Macedon and the Greeks are now at war as well. Uh, firm on is under siege. Usually I give uh, the advantage to the Greeks, but given how this campaign is turning out, I think it's looking slightly in favour of Macedon now. Yeah, nice try Germans, it's not done to happen. Saguntum here has fallen to the Greeks. Now if you know a little bit his of history in the Second Punic War, I believe it was the fall of this settlement here that made the Romans realise Carthage was a threat, they went to war with them and it was Hannibal who took this. He and his massive armies that we can see piling up came all the way around here through the Alps, blah blah blah, and you know the rest of it. But I believe it all started with Saguntum. If, um, if I remember my history right. I could be completely wrong, though, of course. It's just, I don't do ancient history, but I, I know a, a little bit. Macedon and Rome are now at war. Oh, that's... 
That's probably tilted the further into the Greeks by quite a bit, because now Macedon, they're going to lose Segesta, they're going to lose Salona, and Romans are just going to start pouring down this way. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good for Macedon. Uh, Seleucid Empire finally making a move trying to take Halic Carnassus. And it looks like Thrace want Pergamon as well. How is this front looking? Still nothing happened yet? No, not really. Of course, it looks like some battles have been fought, but no territory being exchanged. Oh, I've only just noticed. Scythia. Scythia here. They've lost uh, Campus Scythia, and they've lost um, Campus Alani as well, down to just two settlements. Not a good position for Scythia to be in. They're going to struggle now. Although I'm sure that alliance with Macedon there will save them. <laughs> Elysia has fallen to the British at last. Now, that's the last good settlement for the Gauls. Now they've lost this Italian land as well. Uh, but this is very good for the British. The British have very good chariots, which do very well in auto-resolve. Auto-resolve favours them. And I believe this settlement here usually has a good stables and, you know, good population. So now, the British can get chariots, I think, from Elysia. And they can use those to expand like crazy. Because all these battles here, they're done a bit auto-resolve. And if they've got the best auto-resolve units in the game, they're going to do really good. The Seleucid Empire got pushed out of uh, Halicarnassus there, but it looks like Thrace might take Pergamon. Yep, they did it. That's very good for Thrace. It's a very good settlement for them to have. <laughs> I thought there was something odd. Uh, Scythia here has an alliance with Macedon. Okay, that's kind of understandable. They don't like the Dacians. I could have something there. Uh, Pontus? Eh, I, I guess it defends them from a coastal invasion. Gaul? Alright, first makes sense. Carthage? <laughs> They're like from the Medieval 2 campaign, uh, Milan. I think they at one point had an alliance with eight different factions, I believe. I even created a separate victory just for Milan. If I can get to, um, if I can get to, I think it was... Uh, 10 alliances, they win a diplomatic victory. How close are Scythia right now? Right, 5. If they get 5 more alliances, I'll give them the diplomatic victory. <laughs> yeah, no other factions like that. Some of them have 3, but that's as high as it goes. I forgot this is, um, this is here as well in this campaign. This won't be in your version, this is just in my version to help with the AI and their pathfinding. The Seleucid Empire are at it again, and they seem to have pushed back the Egyptians, so they might actually have a chance this time at taking it. Yep, they've taken it. That's, that's big for the Seleucid Empire. It means they don't have to worry about bringing troops over here. And it also, you know, they've got Thrace as an ally. Pontus, they're about to be destroyed by Armenia, possibly. So yeah, Seleucid Empire can now concentrate all their forces down here against Egypt. Yeah, we could actually lose uh, Pontus next turn. And the Greeks, I think they'll hold out here, but it seems like Scythia is trying to kick them out of Crimea and take it for themselves. I swear Luvavum's been under siege for like 20 turns now. Are they ever going to take it? Nope, apparently not. <laughs> the goals at Luvavum are just immortal. Okay, that could be big. Thrace and Macedon at war. Now, Thrace was getting off to a very good start. Just completely humiliated me in mind. Let's play off first that I did uh, with this mod, but oh well, oh well. But this is a slightly more powerful first, so it's not that humiliating. Like I only had two settlements. They start off with Byzantium, so stop, stop calling me a bad player. It's just come on. <laughs> yeah, I had a few people uh, mocking me in the AI time lapse uh, because Thrace as an AI had uh, better success than I did in the first few turns. But of course, this is a stronger phrase. Bear that in mind. <laughs> uh, but we could actually take a uh, buy in Lazora here, and possibly Thessalonica as well. Uh, the Macedonian army seems occupied with the Romans right now. Uh, the Macedon, Macedon could take Athens. They might have a bit of a comeback with. No, no, never mind. Ah, <laughs> uh, Germans, when will you learn your lesson? <laughs> yep, by uh, by in Lazora here fell to Thrace. And it looks like they want Thessalonica as well. Very stable on this border right now. No one dares move. They know the importance of these battles. This could decide the fate of the entire Middle East and therefore the campaign. 
Seems uh, Pontus has survived for now, but they're still under siege. The Sluice Empire is clearly interested as well. I don't know how long they've got left. The Greeks held on to Crimea. And it seems they should want to remove Scythia. Yep, they've put, uh, they've put a settlement under siege there. What, what settlement was that? Uh, Tan Israel is under siege. Uh, what else? There was something else I saw on the map here. Yeah. Um, yes, Britain are expanding very, very rapidly now. They've taken Lemon, uh, Lugdodum, and they're probably going to take this settlement as well. Maybe not. They might struggle there. Let's see. Yeah, they, they needed those reinforcements in the army, I think. Reason there, but maybe they're trying to starve it out. I don't know what they're doing. Oh, gold could actually die soon. Uh, Lutherdom fell, and both their settlements are now under siege. And there we go, Pontus, the first faction to get destroyed, and it was done by Armenia. Well done, Armenia. Well done. Thessalonica has now fallen. Ooh, Thrace looking really good in this campaign. They've got a lot of potential to do Thrace, and it seems now the Greeks are done trying to take Corneth. Yeah, this is the end of Macedon. Third time lucky? Nope. <laughs> now Scythia could be the next faction to get destroyed. Uh, got one settlement left because Dacia took that. This is a very long campaign by Dacia. <laughs> very long campaign, but they do have territory in the Alps. Yeah, this is Dacian territory, and all the way over here... <laughs> that's a very long empire. Right, who's gonna die next? Scythia? Or the Gauls? I'll say it's actually done with the Gauls, because Scythia, they've got a bit of land between them and other enemies. Okay, this settlement actually fell to the British, that puts them in a very good spot. And they've clearly proven they've got uh, those good, overpowered AI chariots. Uh, they're probably going to take this settlement as well. And then the British could actually be in a position to win this. Wait, how many settlements? The British need to destroy Gaul, I think. Plus 15 settlements, that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, let's say they take this 10. There'll be 5 settlements away from winning. I would say that the British are now in a position where they can win this campaign. I think they can do it. So yeah, I'll add them to the list. Uh, that's the British, the Romans, the Egyptians, and the Seleucid Empire. All powers that could uh, be in the running of a race. Thrace might get in there soon. Uh, how many settlements do they have? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nah, they're not even halfway. And they've still got to destroy Macedon as well. Macedon could survive for quite a bit, really. They do have a lot of armies. I think the Germans have to destroy the Romans. I don't think they're close. Usually, I think if you've got to destroy a Roman faction, like if it says destroy the Julii or destroy the Scipii, uh, others have just modded it to be just destroy all of Rome. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very difficult for those factions. Uh, Carthage expanding as well. Well done, Carthage. It looks like they've expanded by a lot, but no, they've just taken one pointless settlement down here. <laughs> it is nothing, really. Yep, I called it right there. The Gauls were the next one to die. Scythia outlived the Gauls. Uh, where's the notification? Here we are. Gauls destroyed. Now the British are in a very good spot. Where are they going to go next? Into Iberia? Or for the Romans and the Germans? What is... The oh yeah, it's just, I thought it was a glitch. <laughs> um, where are they going to go? They've got the armies for it. They could destroy the Iberians quite easily, I think. And then go for the Carthaginians as well. That could be a very interesting. Imagine if a British take Carthage. And then across through here as well. A British Africa. <laughs> that could be fun to see. Ah, oh, Quinkum has fallen to the Romans. Oh yeah, now where, what's Rome going to do? Uh, their objective was to take Gaul. And I think 15 settlements are on 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. About to be... No, we'll say 10. We'll say 10. So yeah, they're five settlements away as well. And it seems the Seleucid Empire has noticed how close it is, and they're making a move. Sidon is under siege. And they're lost, but they know they need to destroy the Egyptians fast. Thrace and Armenia are at war. Now I don't think anything's under siege. What is Thrace doing right now? They're more just... They're not doing anything, really. That's a problem for the AI. They have a few terms where they just don't do anything. And that's the main weakness. Is that... 
Oh, they've actually got uh, Apollonia under siege. Okay, that could be a good settlement. Blocks off the Romans a bit, bit makes them bored of the Romans. And if the Romans are interested in Apollonia, then they're gonna go for it. They've got an army up here as well. A bit of a waste of an army. If they had this down here to take Lewis, so that might be a better use for it. But up here, like, even if they do take a settlement, the Romans are gonna take it back. They won't be able to hold on to that. Right, now the interesting question is, who's gonna last longer? Scythia or Macedon? Because Macedon, two settlements here under siege, and then it's just Larissa under siege, and then Cornith, which has been under siege before. Ooh, first took Apollonia. Oh, it could be these guys down here for Carthaginians get their army set down. Let's see, have they done a go for it? Nah, it looks like they stopped. Well, that's one Macedonian settlement down. Salona will probably be next. Macedon signed an alliance with Dacia, a little bit too late for that. Thrace took Larissa. Thrace looking really good. Right, how many settlements are we at now then? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 settlements. Macedon's basically destroyed. So yeah, they're about 6 settlements away. Rome could be only 4 away. I'll, for part 3, I'll look into the victory objectives and see what we actually have to all get. Um, so that we can actually know who is close. Carthage trying to take Ostrov up here. Are they going to do it? Probably. Can't imagine the Spanish holding on to that. Oh, but the British go to war with the Greeks. They want Massilla. I bet they'll take it as well. That would give them a very good route into Rome. Now that could be interesting. Defeat imminent. Britain, yeah, but it is destroying goals on 15 settlements. They've taken this. So that puts them now at 11 settlements. They are four settlements away. Rome? I bet they have to destroy Carthage. That could be possible, because if they were to take 15 settlements and destroy Gaul, we'd have a defeat imminent Rome up. But we haven't had that. Hmm. Yeah, we'd have had that notification by now. The British could actually win this campaign. Right, if I was a British then, four settlements away, I would go for Iberia or the Germans. Take for four cheap, easy settlements. Don't get involved with the Romans, I think. I think that'll be the best plan. Ah, the Spanish did hold out down here. Uh, Greece, as always, looks super messy. Just loads of troops all over the place. And still nothing on this border. Oh, actually, we do. Uh, the Egyptians pushing up to Antioch. The Seleucid Empire have a lot of troops there, so now they've moved their troops up there, Seleucid Empire can move down and take Jerusalem and get into Egypt. So that could have been a very big mistake by them. But... Egypt knew that it had to move. If they know how close the British are now, they've all got that defeat imminent notification. They know how close it is and they actually took Antioch. Now, I, I, was, I was thinking advantages to Seleucid Empire and I still think they are. I think Seleucid Empire will win this war eventually. But now that Antioch's fallen and their armies are not moving, it has me worried a little bit. Uh, for the Seleucid Empire. They need to move the armies, do something with them. Okay, they're starting to move them now. I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see uh, where they're going to go. Thrace under siege here at Apollonia. Oh no, it looks like it's the downfall of Thrace is about to begin. Possibly, I don't know. It depends how what the Romans do. How the Romans are going to get involved. The British, they're moving in, they've got Oscar under siege. They've got the troops to take it. They've got a lot of reinforcements as well. They've got an en they've got three armies right now in Iberia. Three massive armies, including the chariots. The British could actually do this. They've got an alliance with Carthage. Eee. Actually, they only need four settlements. One, two, three, four. They can do it just from these. Is this a new settlement as well? Yeah, I think that's a new settlement there. Cornith has fallen to the Greeks, but it looks like Thrace held out. Macedon now down to their final settlement. Scythia down to their final settlement, but it looks like Parthia's gonna get them. Yeah, I think Scythia might be next to that. Ooh, Scythia held out. Interesting. They actually held out. Yeah, we saw Parthia lose a lot of troops as well, so well done Scythia there. Oscar has fallen. The British are now in Iberia. Chaos is about to begin. Oh, I bet the Romans are sweating right now. They're the most powerful faction, I think. But they could lose to the British. Barbarians, imagine. The shame of Rome. 
Why am I trash talking the British? I am British. <laughs> a, a worthy opponent to lose to. That's a better phrase. <laughs> and boom, Scythia is dead. Parthia for where they started. Parthia is doing quite well. They look quite good in purple up there like that. And yep, there we go. The death of Scythia. Ah, I was hoping to see a bit more out of Scythia. One interesting thing is... Thrace's main issue is Scythia, because a lot of their troops are completely naked, uh, their nudist faction. Um, and Scythia with their horse cavalry, they usually tear Scythia, uh, Thrace to pieces. Um, which is a big weakness for Thrace, and something that I was very worried about in my, my Thrace and Let's Play was the Scythians. Uh, just because their playstyle is uh, the best thing to attack us, Thrace. But now with them gone, and Dacia uh, taking the land instead. Now this is sort of like free land all of a sudden for Thrace. But first of all what they need to do is they need to sort out the Greek situation. Because they can't have a war on two fronts and it looks like they are doing it as well. Come on Thrace. They've destroyed Macedon. If they can take these Greek settlements, actually where would they be? I know, Greek, I know Thrace's victory objectives. Destroy Macedon and take 15 settlements. For about 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight, nine settlements. Now let's just say they happen to take these Greek ones as well. 10, 11, 12, 13. Macedon gets destroyed by the Romans. Then they're two settlements away from victory. 14, 15. Thrace could actually do this, but they need to very quickly destroy these Greeks. But the British, they're really on the move now. They've got Numantia under siege. 12 settlements, they need three more. Three more settlements, that's going to be that one, and then two more settlements after that. Oh, it's so close, and this is exactly what I wanted. A race at the end. Exactly how I wanted to see it. And I think this is a good spot to end part two. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please do like and subscribe if you want to see more. Um, and please share this series as well, as that really helps me out. The race is on. Right now, there's lots of factions that could win it. I'd say the two main contenders right now for the race, uh, well, the three main ones are Britain, the Romans, depending on their objectives. I'll double check them and I'll have them all shown in part three. And Thrace. Uh, Thrace could actually do it. Two main superpowers also that could possibly do this are the Seleucid Empire and the Egyptians. They have to destroy each other, and as soon as they do, they'll have the settlements and they'll win. But they're not that close to destroying each other. This is a. This is proving to be a very long war. If this was a very quick war, then one of these will certainly be in it. Um, there's sort of like a power that could, should be involved in this, but they're not just because they're being slow. Anyway, that's a lot of factions that could win. And I don't know how this campaign's gonna go. I don't know who's gonna win in part three. I'm leaning towards the British, but I kinda wanna see Thrace do it as well. At least get close. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed. Hope to see you in part three. And goodbye.